Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and welcome to the System of Jupiter. We're going to start here as a kind of an investigation of, well, really looking for patterns. Today we're actually going to be taking a look at if there is any pattern between various masses of various objects, specifically moons and planets, and also planets and stars. And we're going to see if we can actually discover any kind of a pattern that might be there and then use it to estimate or predict values in other star systems. Let's see what uh, we can get from this video and welcome to Other Math. Now the title of this video basically kind of gives an idea of what we're going to be doing here. We're going to try to look for any kind of a pattern we can discover between the masses of planets and stars and also the masses of planets and their moons. Now it's going to be a slightly uh, difficult task mostly because we just don't have an, a big enough sample in our own solar system to try to come to a very definitive conclusion. But as you'll quickly see, there's actually uh, some patterns we can establish almost right away. This actually kind of came to me as an idea from a study I was reading very recently, where they discovered that uh, there's actually quite a, a very, very well-established pattern of the proportion, um, if you were to look inside our Earth, for example, uh, you can actually find a, a mass proportion of, for example, magnesium to silicon or uh, iron to silicon. So if you actually look at all of the iron in our planet and divide it by all of the silicon, you'll discover that it's actually pretty much the same as the amount of um, iron to silicon or magnesium to silicon inside our star and also inside Jupiter and other planets, which is uh, very, very interesting and very unusual, but this was established uh, maybe a few years ago, back in 2016, by a study that looked at um, some of the more well-known stars and also their planets, and uh, trying to estimate this particular um, ratio. Now, using this ratio, obviously, we can't really come up with any definitive conclusions yet, but it does give us an idea that, you know, by looking at uh, a star and knowing how much um, iron and silica it has inside of it by looking at various spectra and then finding a planet and maybe look at its mass and finding at least one of those elements, we can then estimate how much of um, like silica there is on the, on the planet. We can basically establish if it's a terrestrial planet or not, which is pretty important. But in this video, I actually wanted to take a look at something a little bit uh, more simple, I guess. Let's, let's go to Saturn for a second and specifically this right here, Saturn and its moons. And here, if you actually take a look at uh, the actual object with its moons, you'll see that obviously it kind of looks like a miniature solar system. And that's, many people have obviously questioned this before, and that, that's very interesting because here, if you actually take a total mass of all of the moons of Saturn and divide it by the total uh, mass of Saturn, you'll actually start getting a very interesting ratio that I noticed uh, exists in other, um, or around other objects as well. So, um, Saturn has Titan, which is a bit of an odd oddball because it's a little bit more massive than it should be compared to um, other moons, I guess. Uh, but we're going to use the total mass of these objects to try to see what we can get here. So the total mass of all of the moons of Saturn is approximately 1.84 moons um, of our own, own moon. And the total mass of Saturn in moons is approximately 7,733. If you were to actually divide these two, you would get approximately 4,200. So in other words, uh, the ratio between the total moons of Saturn and Saturn itself is approximately 4,200. All right, well, that's a good start. Let's uh, let's go explore another system. Let's go to, for example, uh, Jupiter and do the same thing. So we're going to combine all of its moons, and specifically here, we really just need to combine these four because they're mo the most massive, and divided by the total mass of Jupiter. So here we have the approximate total mass of all of the moons of Jupiter is about 5.4 masses of moons, and uh, Jupiter itself in in moon uh, ratios or moon masses is about uh, 25,828, which gives us a value of about 4,824. So that's uh, relatively close to Saturn, as a matter of fact. So Saturn was about uh, 4,200. This is about uh, 4,800, which is very interesting. 
if we go to some of the ice giants here, and here we're going to go to Neptune, and even though we know uh, almost for a fact that Triton came from outside of Neptune system, um, it is nevertheless an interesting sort of um, analysis here. So let's actually do the same with Triton. So we're going to basically uh, take the mass of Triton, which for some reason is inside the planet right now, but basically the mass of Triton in moon sizes is about 0.29. And here, the mass of Neptune itself is about uh, 1394, which uh, gives us the value of about 4790, which is, once again, close to about 4800. And even though Triton seems to be an outsider, we think that uh, Neptune did have other moons around it before that were actually kind of kicked out by Triton. So maybe just maybe the mass was actually relatively similar. And the leftover moons are all a little bit small to consider. Uh, so this is, this is pretty interesting so far. So it seems like the mass of moons to ice giants and gas giants is approximately well, or around 4200 to about 4800. The only difference is that this doesn't seem to apply to Uranus. And Uranus being the oddball here, uh, first of all, obviously orbiting completely on the side and also very likely uh, having received a collision that uh, may have actually stripped it of its moons uh, early on. Uh, here, what we'll get is going to be a little bit different. The value is going to be closer to about 15,000, uh, which is basically about uh, four times higher than what we got on other planets. Now, this can mean several things. One of those things is that, well, maybe just maybe uh, Uranus actually did have bigger moons, but they kind of uh, disappeared or got um, kicked out of the system, or have completely uh, been uh, eliminated by Uranus itself. They basically just fell into Uranus. Uh, it's also possible that because of uh, the way that Uranus rotates, uh, something serious may have happened and basically dislodged those moons early on. But also it's possible that uh, this pattern just doesn't work for some other planets. I mean, clearly this pattern doesn't work for Earth and the Moon, because um, if you were to actually go to Earth and the Moon, you would see that, uh, well, the Earth only has approximately 80, 81.3 moons in it. So the ratio here is definitely not 4,000. But that's also because we think that um, normally terrestrial planets don't really get moons that big. Mars, for example, only has two moons and both of them are captured asteroids. Uh, Mercury and Venus don't have moons. So it's possible that because of the collision with Theia early on in the creation of the solar system, Earth just became an oddball and got this very large moon that normally wouldn't exist around terrestrial planets. Now, does this pattern actually exist anywhere else? Well, I actually started looking around at some other objects and, uh, well, just for fun, decided to take a look at uh, the infamous TRAPPIST-1. I went in here and did the same calculation with TRAPPIST-1 because this is a system where we have been studying uh, planets quite carefully and we discovered uh, their mass more or less correctly. We also discovered the mass of the star more or less correctly. And if you actually add up uh, the masses of all of the planets here, you'll get a number that's approximately 4,693. So once again, very, very close to 4,700, which is very, very unusual, but also very interesting. It's, just, um, it's very, very similar to the ratio we got um, around Saturn and around um, Neptune. So is this something that we should be actually looking at? Because what if actually this is a kind of an average for most of the... Um, objects out there, most of the moons and planets, and possibly even some of the uh, red dwarfs and their planets. Uh, but does it actually work for our own solar system? Well, this is where things get a little bit tricky. If we actually take a look at our own solar system and basically combine all of our planets um, by mass and then divide them by the mass of our sun, or I guess do the other way around, take the mass of the sun, uh, let's say in uh, Jupiter's, and divide it by the total mass of all of the planets, you will get a number that's going to be just over 700. And that's kind of not exactly what I expected to find originally, and obviously that's something that puts this pattern into a bit of a question, unless we actually start thinking of Jupiter as an oddball here. As a matter of fact, if we consider Jupiter to be this like failed star or failed brown dwarf that would have potentially created a binary system in our own system um, and basically removed from the picture, if we were to do this again, but this time without Jupiter, 
So let's just erase Jupiter from here and only look at the other objects, including Saturn. And the way we could do this is by adding up the masses of the planets in terms of the mass of Earth. So 95.2 plus 17.1 plus 14.5 plus 1 for Earth and also approximately 1.5 for all the other stuff. And then basically look at the mass of the Sun in terms of Earth's which is about 333,060 3 Earths here. And dividing these uh, by each other, you'll get a number that's a little bit closer to about 2,800. So not exactly 4,000 that I expected, but still a lot closer to that ratio than, than before. And interestingly, you'll actually discover a similar pattern around other sun-like stars, including 51 Pegasi, which is one of the more famous ones. And here, uh, the mass of uh, 51 Pegasi is approximately 346,000 masses of Earth, and the planet we discovered around it is about 146, and this is the most massive planet in the system, which probably comprises most of the mass here. And the pattern, uh, if you divide it again, will yield you 2400. So for stars th uh, that are similar to the sun, maybe there is also a kind of a ratio and a kind of a pattern we would expect that would be a little bit different for planets and moons. So for moons and planets, it was closer to about 7,400 you know, on average. And here it's closer to about um, 2400. All right, so before we go on, I just wanted to make sure that you understand that this is just a speculation for now. There's obviously no actual study that did find these patterns just yet. We've only discovered some patterns here and there, but um, most of them have not been statistically uh, relevant just yet. But let's just say that there is a pattern and we'll discover it one day. Why is it important? Well, by looking at a star and some of the planets, we can then estimate if there's other planets around it, if the, those uh, ratios are not met. Like for example, if I right now go to Proxima B and look at the star, which is about uh, 129 masses of Jupiter, look at the only planet Proxima B that we discovered in masses of Jupiter and find the ratio, it's going to be pretty big. It's going to be like 32,000 or something like that. But we would expect this to be closer to about 7,000 which would suggest that there's got to be other planets here. You should have other planets that would basically um, equalize the actual uh, mass, making it a little bit closer to the ratio we expect. Now, uh, if we discover this ratio one day, let's call it some kind of a golden solar ratio or whatever, uh, this would help us dramatically. It would help us, uh, it will allow us to basically predict planets where there should be planets or predict stars that should have planets around them simply looking at the composition of a star and then predicting the mass that it should have orbiting around it. This would actually uh, also allow us to find planets that are a lot more Earth-like and habitable because we already have some ratios we've established, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video. We already know that there is a clear um, correlation between ratio of um, iron to silicate compared to iron to silicate in the star. And finding another ratio would allow us to basically estimate uh, various uh, planetary parameters much, much easier. So until we discover these patterns, until we actually find something that's a little bit more concrete, all of this is a speculation, but we're going to keep looking and I'm going to keep looking at various studies that will hope, hopefully one day help us discover exoplanets a lot easier and help us find a new planet Earth out there. Until then, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. Thank you so much for watching and consider clicking that subscribe button if you still haven't. If you love learning about space and you love video games, this is probably a channel for you. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. Space out. And as always, bye bye.